the things I see when people start playing is they, they try to do vibrato like this with their fingers. Ah, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And I found that if you keep your fingers stiff, yep. and your thumb becomes, becomes a pivot point, and you got to make sure that your wrist isn't back like this, right? Yeah. So that your palm isn't against the back of the neck. You want to create space. So you take this and you shift. So now there's a big space in between my palm and the neck. And I'm keeping my fingers stiff. I'm not doing this, right? And then my thumb becomes a pivot point. And so what you do is you start rocking your whole wrist, keeping your fingers stiff. And literally when I'm looking at, at Brett's wrist back here, it's doing yeah, this. It does behind, it's this motion. You know, so, yeah. so like, yeah, go ahead. So, and then when you... It's way easier to get a very smooth vibrato. If I tried to do that with just my fingers it, it's it's more Sounds wanky weird. sound yeah right so like look at my my wrist how it's wrong so there's that and then on a stationary note you know you can free your hand right and you can you know sometimes on the um if it's like the middle strings like the a d and g you can pull down and let the momentum of the guitar literally pulling down you know, be a natural kind of, it naturally creates vibrato. I love it. The tricky part is when you start doing chords. You know, people like, Shh. yeah, there's ways to do it, but um, I, I would just say start with this motion and your, keep your fingers stiff and rocking the wrist. Yeah. For sure. Do you know, one of the, one of the best ways I found to learn to be a melodic guitar player is learn how to play rhythm like Hendrix because he, he mixes chords and scales mm -hmm. together. I mean, when you think about like, Excuse you, okay, but there that, that, that whole, see exactly what you're that doing whole bit. Right? Yeah. It teaches you how to play out of the chord shapes or little wing, any of those. You're playing out of those chords. Yeah. And so it teaches you to just start thinking about the proper use of where where scales and chords fuse together, you mm -hmm. know, and to me, like learning and, and then learning, like how how do you do that, you know, like all those Hendrix licks, like I, I saw it, but then it wasn't until I I realized that oh right that's position three, mm -hmm. and now it's like. But I wouldn't consider them mistakes in the term, in the, you know, in a negative way. But like, if sometimes I'm noodling, I'll come up with like a different pattern or a different way to, to attack the string. And, it, you know, like we were talking about that lick that I was showing you. Um, where am I? This little lick, which I do have a lesson on this. Um, <laughs> Love that. So it's kind of got that fake whammy bar yeah. uh, Steve Vai thing. I don't know how I stumbled on that. I think it's, you know, I was just noodling around and I I did that. And I'm like, ooh, that was cool. Yeah. And what if I did it on the pentatonic scale or something? Yeah. So just that little. I love that, man. Just... I've never done that before in my, how long have I been playing guitar? Like 30 years of guitar playing. In terms of playing over a blues, I kind of, the way my mind works is, um, you know, and a lot of us, the first thing we grab is the pentatonic scale, the minor mm -hmm. pentatonic scale, which is great to, to, to work on. But there's so many things that you can do uh, with just pentatonics and, um, you know, five note scales. And from there, depending on the... Um, you know, whether the, the blues that we're playing is a minor blues or a, a dominant seven type blues, mm -hmm. I'll start delving into more modal stuff or, um, you know, maybe hitting. So if you're, we're doing G blues, right? So instead of, I might sneak in the major third and the sixth 
which is not in the pentatonic scale, but that would be part of like the mixolydian scale. Yeah. So from there, um, sometimes I'll sneak in Dorian if it's like a minor blues. Um, and then I'll expand, you know, and play outside, which is what a lot of players like to do, which is playing um, not, they, they might sound like wrong notes to different pe right. people, but it's more about um, playing outside of the normal scale or the mode. So mm -hmm. like, which is actually that note is part of the blues scale, which mm -hmm. is, you know, a lot of people know it, the blues scale as part of the pentatonic scale. Right. So that's, mm -hmm. that would be technically an outside note to me. Yeah. That's really tense. Um, and then, uh, what else? I mean, you could do the trick where you play a lick, a half step up, and then a half step down to create tension. So like... Something like that. Hmm. But it, it really depends on if I want to go outside. Sometimes I just want to play traditional blues and I'll stick to like the pentatonic scale or the BB blues box or something mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. So, and it depends on the situation. You know, if I'm playing a blues at a blues club, I might not try to play jazz fusion licks, you know, right. depending on yeah. who's listening or how I feel. Yeah. But yeah. I might get like so tired of what I'm playing that I'll play something ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Not even a scale, just like a pattern yeah. or something weird. Well, probably just knowing where they are to start mm -hmm. is probably a good idea. Your fifth fret harmonics. Seventh and twelfth, of course. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then I guess if you're going to get a little more advanced, uh, like if I was to make a chord, mm -hmm. you can follow the chord uh, harmonics twelve frets away with your fingertip and your thumbnail. So I touch the harmonic at the twelfth fret, mm -hmm. plug it with my thumbnail, and then move. And I'm just basically following the shape of the chord. Yeah. Like Eddie Van Halen did that. Yeah. Three sixteen song. Yeah. Over A. Yeah, something like that. And he may have done it with he the He would do he would uh, Oh, did you do it like Yeah, this? he would like tap just tap over the fret. Right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then you're doing it with your thumb and then I'll do it like this, like mm -hmm. classical style. So I'll pull it okay. with my with my ring finger. Like that? Yeah. Okay. That's yeah. that's another way Isn't to do it. Isn't it funny? It's so many different techniques okay. to do stuff, right? For those of you interested, here's a pretty interesting harmonic thing called cascading harmonics. Yeah. <laughs> That's beautiful. That kind, of, that kind of thing? Yeah. Sounds like a harp. That's really cool. Yeah. Chet Atkins or Tommy Manuel, those yeah. guys are that, that style. Well, understanding your scale, so, or like what, I guess, arpeggios for each chord. Mm -hmm. So if I'm playing a, say if I'm playing a, a C major 7 to A minor 7 to D minor 7 to G 13, mm -hmm. right? If I want a bass line, What I'm doing is what I call bumping. Yeah. And that's what a bass player would do is like a half step before the note yes. and into the, the root note of the chord. So a one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, into the, the, the you can see I'm playing C, A, D, G. Is that what bass players are doing or are they just? Maybe. I don't know. Well, no. dude, that sounds just, good. Yeah, I always thought, I just always assumed that, that they were walking through the scale itself. But when I've done that, yeah, when I've experimented, it's, chord, it's chord, like, it doesn't sound right. Material. So like, yeah. Uh, that's that great, yeah, yeah, yeah. You need to go backwards. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I love yeah. that. Man, loopers are great. Mm -hmm. You can use it for practicing all sorts. That's what we That's were opened up with. Mm -hmm. Eric put together this cool uh, chord progression that we were just jamming um, over the top of it. So my tips are, um, man, you can do so many things. You know, you can you can you can play a progression, and then once it's looping, you can you can figure out how to play that same progression in different positions using some different 
chord forms from the cage system. You could play a progression and you could practice uh, playing some lead lines over it. Mm -hmm. um, so much you can do. Loopers, yeah. loopers are a great tool. Yeah, and if sometimes you're like, I don't know what to play, that's perfect. That's exactly where you need to be because you need to create something out of that nothingness. Well, what do I do? Well, play something, do something. The only way for you to get good at something is to to jump in and to, and to attempt to do something. It's definitely not gonna happen by sitting on your hands and going, well, I don't know what to do. You gotta do something. You gotta play the wrong notes to know what, what notes to play. You gotta do something, okay? And whatever it is, anything that you're having issues with today, if you're like, God, I'm having issues with bar chords. Do you have any suggestions on what I should practice? Bar chords. If you're having issues with scales, practice scales. If you're having issues with the cage system, work with the cage system. You know, you gotta dig into whatever it is that you're that you're having issues with. I know that sounds obvious, but most po most folks I know don't think this way from the, the questions that I get all the time. I'm like, you need an exercise to play scales? No, you practice the scales. You need an exercise to play the chords? No, nope. practice the chords, okay? Um, and then I, I like to try to get to some song as quickly as I can. Yeah, I like so to make this, it. I, you know, I don't want to play a meaningless scale exercise. I want to yes. do something like <laughs> a great way to exercise yeah. some pentatonic scales. Play along with my girl. Right? Snail's pace. Mute it. So I'm in like an A minor pentatonic here, you know. So you're saying like if you're pulling off on the second string, you're hitting the first string and doing something like or maybe if you're on the third string, you're hitting the second string, like... That's, that's what I'm happening. guessing. Right, yeah. 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 So, I mean, I have... When I fret with my index finger, I lean my index finger back so that it... So that I can use uh, the other portion of my index finger to actually mute the strings underneath it. Like this. See that? Mm -hmm. Nothing's, nothing's ringing it underneath that finger there. Yeah, really, it's a matter of digging in and it's a matter of going slow and breaking things down. That's what makes the difference between a good guitar player or a mediocre guitar player and a great guitar player is the fact that they're looking at the details. <laughs> Yeah, by muted finger style, I'm assuming the um, Chet Atkins, the Chet Atkins style, sort of yeah. thing. Yeah, mm -hmm. Merle Travis thumb. Um, it helps to have a thumb pick. Um, I've seen people do it without. It's a different sound. You know, you can mess around. There's no right or wrong. But Chet was using a thumb Chet pick. Chet was using a thumb pick. Merle Travis used a thumb pick. Okay. Tommy uses a thumb pick mm -hmm. on most of his songs. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, you basically want the palm or the fleshy part of your hand right here to sit on the bottom three strings. Mm -hmm. um, so E, uh, A, D, mm -hmm. and then G, it should be starting to ring out for the most yeah. part. And then B and E should definitely be ringing out because that's where your melody is gonna be for the most part, unless mm -hmm. you're changing it up during a song. So um, a good way to start with this sort of technique is to take, uh, let's take a G chord actually right here. Uh, this is just a G bar chord. Uh, so you start with your thumb on the low string. Make sure you, when you pick this, you got your palm down so it's muted, yep. right? Mm -hmm. um, and I like to set it right down on. Uh, some guys come up pretty far, but it, it just kills it too much for me. Yeah. Um, so you start with the, the low string, then you go up to the D string, then the A string, then the D string, then E, mm -hmm. D, A, D. And that's, you know, another thing, just take your time with it. You yeah. Know? Um, the idea here is to play the the one beat and then the, the back beat is the D string for the most part. Mm -hmm. Then the next beat, then the back beat again. Yeah. Then the one again. Um, and if you listen to like bass players, uh, 
you know, that are going from a one to a five. That, mm, 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 yeah. Mm, 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 yeah, that's that's kind of what's happening, but you have a backbeat in between. Right. So w whatever chord you're on, this goes back to the music theory. It's nice to know what what notes are in your chord. If you're on a C, you want to go down there to get the five. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean. So in this case, on a C, you would start on the fifth string, then the D string, then you move this down. Yep. Catch the five. Yep. In the key of C, mm -hmm. and then back to D, then right there. Yeah. And it, it becomes common knowledge with just the, the shapes that you're in. You know yeah. which ones to use. Yeah. Yeah, I do that yeah. some. Mm -hmm. And with I mean, there's different kind of genres of fingerstyle. You got some guys that are doing full blown percussion, right, where, they're, yeah. where they're where they're using two hands and they're tapping, and they're using their whole guitar as a drum. You know, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, I don't really do that. You know, right. I've kind of dabbled with it, but I don't do that. Um, and then as far as like percussion with the thumb pick, you know what I mean? That's creating a bass line, but then you can. lay this down on the bridge right here right. as you play a bass note, which that's, you know, it takes some getting used to right there. Yeah. And that creates a drum. Yeah. You know, I mean, there, there's your kick drum, especially if you're plugged in and you're going through a PA. Yeah. That sounds like a kick. Yeah. And it's awesome. Yeah. Um, but then you have you can do um, percussive stuff in between. So like the classical gas uh, at mm -hmm. the beginning of the show. Um, and, it, and it, that's just a drum fill. You yeah. know what I mean? Um, like what a drummer would do, you yeah. just kind of listen and see how many hits you can get in yeah. until you have to land back on the chord. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah.